you know, for any sport, men's basketball, volleyball, or women's basketball. Yeah, yeah it's certainly, certainly a, a historic, historic game here inside UNF Arena. As far as keys to the game goes, number one, receiving no errors. Florida State has played only five games compared to UNF, but they have significantly less errors in the serve receive department with 12 compared to 70. UNF has shined in the past from the back line. It has also helped them win the momentum in other areas of the game has been slow. So that's going to be a tough area. Number two, out the gate swinging. Both teams are pretty evenly matched defensively. FSU averages about 15.5 digs per set and UNF averages about 12.7. FSU has 2.5 blocks per set compared to UNF's two. Because both teams are matched defensively, the most important thing in this first set is who can start heating up quicker on the net. And then finally, 5-1 versus 6-2. This match directly exhibits the age-old question of 5-1 versus 6-2. With a 5-1, you get more simplicity, and that means consistency and set with your hitters. But with the 6-2, though, you have three hitters locked and loaded, and and a stacked block. As Koenig gets us started here, Burkhart was serving. She's our impact player. And then Koenig, of course, co-ACC player of the year last season. And potentially, I'd say, an FSU Hall of Famer when her career is said and done. Henke will serve for the Knowles. Antar with the set. The Ospreys striking there with a lefty swing. As we get our first look at Ella Bynes tonight. Yeah, she had a great performance at home with the UNF Invitational. Such a talented setter. A transfer from Alaska, Fairbanks. As Mielis will serve quite a bit. You see those heavy swings already from Florida State. There's Koenig up again for another point. Yeah, just not, not something you want to be giving them. And she'll be the surfer, the setter from Memphis, Tennessee, the grad student. This FSU team, Diana, stacked with some good transfers. Antar again, they go to Bynes. She goes with the dump. Annie Antar loves that. Koenig again, and number four just heating up. Yeah, did a great job getting up, hitting around the block there, going for the hard cross. Over now, 60 kills on the season for her. The senior not too far away from Wesley Chapel, Florida. Soaring in, there's Burkhart. Tough down the line, and there's that lefty kind of hook there from Maddie Snyder. I'm just eyeing those two left-handed right sides. I'm just <laughs> On a 3-0 run here, Robertson. Leads the team in assists. Antar. And you talked about it before we hopped on air tonight, how tough it's going to be with those blockers at the net for FSU. Yeah, they're really going to have to, first of all, get that block or get that pass right to Antar so she can fully set up that offense. Because if you don't fully get that run, they're going to struggle a lot with that block. They do a great job of tracking. It's a little bit, they got to get that offense fast so they kind of trip up those blockers. And an excellent serve from Lauren Robertson. As she keeps this run going, now a 5-0 stretch. As fans continue to trickle in, another rainy day here in Jacksonville. Antar the feed, and there's Kirsten McFall. The Ospreys stop that run. Let's see it one more time. That's a new one that we've seen from McFall, kind of going the, the back, back rather than going for the quick one. I think that's going to be key for the Osprey offense is really switching it up, run, running those a little bit. Maybe Guthrie to serve for the Ospreys. A slide, and it's in there for Corey Lewis. Lewis, this went to Florida High. Here's Koenig to serve. Free ball for Florida State. Unable to take advantage. Antar goes to Anna Butler for the first time this evening. I love her placement on that last one. I mean, definitely, we're going to be talking about it all evening, but the block is huge. They do a great job of setting their position to kind of shut down that offense. So that's what the Ospreys are going to have to do. They're going to have to kind of think a little bit more smarter. Placement over power. We'll be saying that a lot. This is Siopa to serve. 
There's that high set, Robertson, and the crush again. It's Lewis. Beautifully done. An interesting thing about Lewis is she earned a prestigious invite to the 2024 USA Volleyball Spring Training Camp. And that's just such a huge honor. Kind of get ushered into that. Because really, that's like the next phase for some of these ladies. And Gaona comes in with the ace. And you mentioned it too, a little different too with the two libero jerseys. Yeah, a new, a new rule change. Of course, you can have two liberos dressed out. Only one can be on the court though. Antar, there's a slide again, it's McFall. As you see that, just length of Florida State at the net and the Osprey is there. Able to get over that, around it. And trail now by five. That's Burkhardt's first kill of the evening. Great placement to that corner. Here's Riley Moorhead. Just checked in, they'll give it back to Florida State. As Sova is going to come back in. And they'll have to get it in the books. So it'll come on back. It'll be feeling. And she is an excellent player, too. 12 aces on the season. That cool connection with her mother playing at Arkansas under Coach Poole. Yeah, I will have to get more into that story later on because that, that's got to be kind of a special moment for her mom. Six-point lead for the Knowles. Feeling with that high toss. So much power behind the swing. Siopa goes short. Koenig from the back row. Slide there by the Ospreys, and they go down the line, and a nice shot. Our first look at Arrington. Yeah, that's kind of her favorite run is that slide run. I mean, the placement was there just a little bit to the right, of course. Lock didn't look fully set, though, so I would suspect that maybe we'll see a little bit more of that run from her. Stays with Phelan. The pass for Burkhart over to the scorer's table. Nice grab by uh, Megan Mahan. Uh, why has FSU been clicking so well through 16 points? As a serve here, Antar loves to go short sometimes on those serves. Big set, a swing, a crusher from Taylor Head. What a talent she is. Last year she was in the University of Arkansas. Antar, this one comes over. Just a little bit of daylight right there as we see Bynes once again. It's got to be the most lefties I feel like I've seen on one court in a, in a good bit. Yeah, I mean, they're making their way into the game for sure. And I don't know, I've, I was talking to someone kind of nerding out about lefties recently, and so maybe I just especially noticed it recently. But quite a few on the court. Certainly makes it a lot harder for reading. That one binds, almost getting the video board. Koenig soaring in. Good get from Burkhardt. Mielis. That new libero reaching out. What a play by her. By far our best point this evening. For Butler. Head was ready in the back row. The roll shot just perfectly placed there by Henke. How about that rally though? That was, you, you hit it right on that. That was the best rally we've seen so far this evening. And Mielis. She had... Three beautiful digs. Almost got that pancake there at the end. They're <laughs> right there, yep. Good effort from the libero. Yane Hinke, the server. There's Bynes. He's been fun, humble with Burkhart and Bynes. Yeah, I mentioned that Bynes was a transfer from Alaska Fairbanks. She's actually from Orlando, which is funny. She go all the way north and then all the way south. But she had 423 career kills on 1,017 attempts. Antar here in the middle. Burkhart, Amy Burkhart with her third kill. 
So she and Bynes both neck and neck. You know that back row keys to the game because I just wanted to see how it play out. But with the stacked block, I figured maybe they would go more from more looks for that back row attack. And Burkhart, I mean, that's like a signature move that she's been really working on. I'm loving that too in women's volleyball. That wasn't always the case. Back row attacks, like you'd see them, but it's been more. Holding that six point lead, UNF soccer team, the women's side trotting in before they play on the road at Davidson. And it's Koenig once again at the net. She has had a great start to this first set. We'll take our first time out. The Ebertson still on the serve. And it's gonna drop for another ace. Talk about another transfer. Robertson, she transferred in from University of Memphis. She played in 48 sets in 2023 for the Tigers. She tallied six double-doubles and recorded a total of 304 assists. Well, Memphis is actually the next opponent for FSU football. As we've got the other libero in, we'll see Dupes coming in. The miss last year, you see with the, the leg injury, has that brace on her right knee. Serving is Guthrie. He's already had a more productive season than she did last year. Robertson with the feed, and that's just really smooth passing. And we see had that nice match against Georgia. Eight kill evening that day. Stuffed by Snyder. A little miscommunication between Burkhart and Butler. What, what do you think happened there? To her staff is the assistant coach, Morgan Wilson, who was on the team playing last year. Healy Meow. Meow the server. And they use those tall middles. Lewis has done it twice already in this match. The feed once again to the left feet. And just a tough ball to defend. Once again, Maddie Snyder. Yeah, that and, I mean, Florida State's running such a quick offense right now. Didn't even have the, a fully outside block set on that one. Makes it really tough for the, those back row defenders. Stays with Feely now. And that one sails long. And another little mini run for Florida State. They've scored five of the last six. And that one's going to sail wide as well from Anna Butler. And we'll see Siopa coming in for Anna Butler. What kind of spark do the Ospreys need right now? Certainly starts with a pass. They've been really struggling. Well, there's a good pass. Kind of made me eat my words. Uh, but when you have kind of that not lack of consistency in that back row, it really kind of throws things off on the fighting during season play. And Feely Mouse sails it long. So we'll have something to look at on film from the first set of how to improve. Tanelli Siopa. Richard Jr. And that one's going to drop in for an ace, and the Ospreys definitely needed that little punch. Really great at last season, so that's going to be kind of a crutch here today. They've been a little bit slower to start from the back line, but certainly picking it up. Some strong serves by Siopa. He set Snyder again, the lefty. There's Burkhart. Set to the outside, and nobody in the vicinity, and Man, she is just really good on that opposite side. That's Taylor Head, the grad student. As I mentioned again, played at Arkansas previously. Yeah, such an impressive approach as well. I was watching her go, and I was like, ooh, that's intimidating. But great placement from the graduate student. Deona serve, and there's Kirsten McFall. We saw that connection a lot last season. The two Klein Texas products. Yeah, she's been a fun one to watch. She had to all finish the season with 122 sets plays last season with 248 kills. And that one's going to drop an ace for Riley Moorhead, their second in the last four or five points. Here's another angle from Eric's camera shot. And 
and doesn't give get the love from the tape this time. That's always the best. Well, it's just that it, much sweeter in the game. Well, it was interesting, too, because you could hear the FSU staff yell out, tape, it's going to drop. Mm -hmm. Serving is feeling. So much power here. Ball practically goes off screen. Arrington. Knowles needed a little better pass. There's Taylor Head. Osprey's wall is working. And they get stuffed there by Solva, the freshman, standing at six foot five. And we'll take a timeout here as Florida State takes set number one, 25 to 13.